Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at the timeline insert option. Before we get into that, it's just a heads up. This is only allowed if you are on a workspace. So you need a workspace account in order for this to show on the insert. So this is the timeline. And if you don't see it, that means you don't have access to it. So just starting that off, just in case you know you don't have it, it's not a new feature that's being rolled out for all accounts, at least as of now, unfortunately. If you do have it, it is a very helpful option, and we'll kind of go through what you can do. Now, before I insert it, you should have some data. Here I have a table that kind of shows a start and end date, user, a task, a request type, for example, status, notes, and a technician. Kind of a help desk to manage tickets. And you can just kind of see some of the information here. And I have already inserted some drop downs and have colored them. That's something that is helpful to have. And we'll kind of review that as we go forward. So first, you're going to go to insert and then timeline. It's going to ask you to create a timeline and select your range. I did try this. And unfortunately, you can't do table one. So you will have to use a specific range. You can have it go past it. You'll get some errors when you go in there versus if you just select the table. But we'll start by doing this and go from there. So you push OK. Then you get a timeline. Now, in this one, there's kind of a few different things to go through. So first off, you can see some things are grayed out just because you can't edit those within it. And that's normal. Um, you have the view, you can, you know, kind of see the comments and different things there, but it's it's going to be in the sheets. Same for data, tools, it's, it's not as much here, it's more so in this menu options. So first off, you have this option to go to today's date, and you can see where that is. Next, you can adjust the timeline by going days if you want, and then scroll through if you want a little bit more details, weeks, months. And kind of as you see, it gets longer. If you have lots of data, you can go multi-year. Again, this one is more condensed, so we don't really have that. I'm just going to go ahead and go back to months. You can also go to comfortable or condensed. It just kind of makes the rows, if you will, a little bit smaller. So you see more on your screen. There is a show cards in collapse view. Mine, I have some that are in the same, so it won't collapse in this case. I haven't really used it, honestly, so... You can then also decide if you want it to stop or continue through. That just means if it's a smaller one to take more room there, which I would say that makes more sense. And then you can, of course, zoom in a little bit if you want while the top portion still stays the same. So go back to zero. So the settings button actually opens up the settings here. And as I mentioned, these ones have the errors because I picked a range that has, well, over 900 rows that have nothing in it. And so those are the errors. Outside of that, it doesn't make a difference. Go to support if you want to learn more about it and see the community help center. Now that we're here, this is the part where it does help to have some color. And then we can kind of adjust what we see on these cards. So you need a start date and an end date. And if you don't have that, or if you only have one, you'll need to make sure you have an end date. Next, you can choose what the card type is. So you can choose it to be start date if you want, and that's what you'll kind of primarily see. So you could switch it to the task if you want, or the user, or you know the request type, whatever you want the title to be. I'm going to keep it at user so we know who we are working with. Now, this is where the card color is going to be based off of the origination or where it originated from. And so this is where, if you want to do the status, you can see that it changes the color based off of the status here. And that gives you quick understanding of which ones are resolved in green or you know working on it pending, other things like that. You do note that some of these card colors, when they're dark like this, it's hard to see. And you can try to change it there, but you actually can't because it's based off of the conditional formatting or this option here. 
So if you want those to be lighter so you can, well, actually see what's there, you can go to this and edit, switch the color, and maybe we'll do, yeah, we'll just switch it to there. Done. And that should do it to all based off of this um, table formatting. Then when you go back, you can see this, you can now read it. So this, I might also choose because that's just a little hard to see. Uh, right now, though, I don't need to. So we need to go back to settings. Additionally, you could switch this to, to request type, and that'll switch to what kind of request this was. So again, super helpful to do that. If there isn't any colors on there, then it will not be anything. So this is, again, a way to organize your data and be able to see a little bit quicker. I'm going to keep it on status for now. Next, you can have details of the card. So here, you could say what the task is if you want just that. You could say, you know, the status. It doesn't really make sense in this case since the color is also showing the status. Um, you can also do ones like notes. Now, if you have one that's very long, you can see that this kind of continues on and you can't see it all. It doesn't necessarily, there isn't an option to have it wrap. If you click into it, you can see the full notes, but from here, you cannot. So just keep that in mind. Finally, you can group the cards. And this is the kind of last sort of thing that I'm going to show in this example. Finally, there's the finally there's the card groups. And this is kind of the last setting that you can do. I mean, already, hopefully you see and find a use of this. But what you can do is group it by a certain thing. So, for example, you could do it by the start date. And so then you'll see the start date and what tasks there were. You could switch it to the end date and then have those that are due today or have already been, you know, done. You could do that. Other things you can do too is you could do it by task or request type. So if you do it by task, you could say here that there's all these tasks and there's a few in this help desk task or work on station task, Wi-Fi task, and so on. And this allows you to have these grouped in a specific way. Status could be one that's helpful where you have all of those green statuses, all the processing repair. And this would be a way that you can go to whatever status you need and work on it. Another one could be by technician. So here you could see all the ones assigned to Matt, to Matt Jr., and to Doug Douglas. And whoever's view it is, they can go down to their section and work on those tickets that they have. So I'm going to go just switch it back to the status. Let's say that there's one you want to work on, like this one right here. You can see that there's no notes like the other ones, and maybe you want to start working on this um, case. You can click it, and you can't edit it on the card, but you can actually press Edit Data, and it'll open up the exact row that it's pulling from, and then you can start editing. Looking for the lost device. Now, if you go back to the timeline, you can see those notes come up here. Again, this timeline is very helpful. And this is just one of the examples. You can, of course, have events coming up in the future and be able to see what the tasks are there. You would be able to do all sorts of different options with coloring. So this is the way that I personally have used it, which is through kind of seeing what tickets are open still or closed and being able to work on the ones I need to work on, close them out, and so on. And it's just a different helpful way to see how long, like these ones have been open a long time rather than these ones are shorter. So hopefully you find this helpful. And again, if you have workspace, I definitely encourage you to take a look at this because this could really help visualize some of your different tasks if you have that start date and end date. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to do the YouTube things, like, share, subscribe. Anyway, till the next one, bye now.